amount of our time, loads of things here, let's get stuck into it. As always, I'll go through small solages and there'll be links down below for anything you might be interested in, so go and check out those links down there. Right, it's a universal joint for these bits, for like screwdriver bits. So, for example, something like this. So if you need to be around a corner, so you can't quite get to it, you can do it like this. It's not as universal as I'd like, it would have been nicer to be a bit more of an angle on it. But you can hold it with this and then spin it here. So if you can't get straight on or something, because you're in a tight space, this might get you out of trouble. I don't know if you put two together, is it worth it? I don't know, we really gain much, would you? But yeah, I don't know, might be useful. Saw them, I thought, well, yeah, let's get a couple of them. They just popped up in my AliExpress feed. I thought that might be useful. Why not? They're cheap. Strange package. So this is a spectral trimming tool adjuster, or adjuster tool thing. This was not cheap, actually. In fact, I was expecting to see more than one. I thought I was getting a set. This was $30 for this one trimming tool. Like I said, I thought I was getting a set. I'm going to have to go back and look at that listing. I thought I was getting like four of them or something. But I was getting this because of this is good for those little multi-turn trimmers you get. Like this kind of thing. So these kinds of trimmers, does it fit? Yes it does, great. I did actually have some like red ones which aren't very good. You know, to be honest, they just didn't ever work very well. But I wanted these for these multi-turn trimmers so you can get onto these kinds of ones and you know not slip off. And it's always been a bit of a pain using a normal screwdriver because they always slip and move around. And that's why I wanted this. But uh, also you could always use this end if you really wanted to, for a different type even. But this has got the slot type with the enclosed end so it doesn't slip off. But yeah, like I said, I paid 30 bucks for that and I thought I was getting a set of four, not one. I might have to go and look into that. So MC7918CTG says so an 18 volt negative regulator. And another one, so two of those, two negative 18 volt regulators, linear regulators. Standard LM type series, or L type series, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's only one amp at that voltage, but nothing too exciting there. Just restocking. I actually didn't have any 18 volt ones, and I saw them and thought, I'll get a couple. Never yeah, know, it might come in handy one day. I have no idea what this could be. I've actually got two packages which are very similar. Yeah, I think so. It's a screen. Yeah, this is for Samsung A12. Pretty sure that's what it is because it's got two connectors here. All the two different screens recently for guys at work that needed this. Phones fixing. So I think that's the Samsung A12. Pretty sure it's A12. Can't be the exact model number. I think pretty sure that's what it is. So I've got to do a repair on that. So I might do a video on that. Does it just say which one it is on anywhere here? They assume you know, I suppose, when you order it. Find out what this one is. I think it's similar. So this has got glue as well. This one. Oh, cut the bag open. Didn't want. Now I did actually do this repair once already. It's for an Oppo phone. Is it Oppo 45? I think it was something like that. The screen was cracked when I put it on. I'm pretty sure it was like it from the sender. I think the sender sent me a broken screen. So this is for an Oppo. It's a very similar sort of setup. Let me check the screen this time before I attempt to fit it, which is what I found out the other one was bad, was when I fitted it. Let's have a close look at this. This one looks fine. I had a little bit of damage down the bottom corner here, and I'd never noticed it until after I fitted the screen. This one looks fine, so that's good. So those two screens have arrived so I can repair those two phones. It's like I said, I've already done the video showing the repair of the Oppo one, but I finished it and then I realised that the screen was broken because I went to go and peel off the screen protector which comes on the screens, you know, the original ones, the little film you peel off. And that's when I found that actually it's cracked, so that was great. But uh, anyway, we've got another one. Now this is something I think I saw on Dave's channel. Dave EV Vlog Dave, Mr Jones. So this is a USB tester thing. Comes with a nice manual. Yeah, I bought two different types. Both comes with own manuals. So, Kaber Q. Look at that. 
And I think, yeah, Dave featured these on his channel. I'm pretty sure it was Dave that did it. So you've got this USB-C tester. You run to a little CRT032 battery, which is included in this case. It's got USB-Cs both sides. And you can loop the cable around, and it will tell you the connections inside the cable. So if you need to test to see if the cable has got these various lines in it, because there's loads of USB standards, right? USB-C, you think, oh, great, it's a standard. Not so much. There's lots of different configurations of USB-C. You may find a cable work on one device but not another because of these standards or lack of standards or whatever you want to interpret that as. So those are connections it checks for. So it's got the TX and RX lines and it just checks it passes through and all the grounds and signal lines and things like that and data lines here as well, original data lines. I think they've got in the mailbag and I thought those look really cool. I think I'll get a couple of these. So I've got this one here and I've got this other one which is a standard USB 3 type connector to a USB-C does the same kind of thing, it shows you the, the lines that will go through it. I've got a cable here, let's plug one in, shall we? Let's take out the screw here, which is used to hold the battery in. Nice, right, so you can put that screw back in there and it stops the battery from sliding out. Although these holders are actually pretty good, they're pretty strong. Wouldn't really think it's necessary. Anyway, let's get a cable, which I've now dropped on the floor. Let's plug in the USB-C side. It's showing us power. I'm not going to read the manual, plug this side in. Yeah, so it's got the data lines, VCC, data minus, data plus, ground A, and shield. You've got these CC1, CC2, because it looks like CC1. So I flip this around, what happens? So you now it says CC2. So, yes, it works fine. And obviously this one will do a very similar thing, but it's testing all the cable connections. So that's nice. And once you've got the my cable plugged in, because it's a really passive device, there's no mic controller on it, it's purely passive. Not having a cable plugged in means no battery draw. So you can sit it like this, unused, until you want to go and use it. It should last for quite some time. Excuse the senile cat. The manual is really nice, it comes with this actually. The information about the sockets tells you all the pinouts for the plug. So there's all the pinouts of the USB, tells you what the connections are. Pinouts of the USB. And the types, just here explains which one's which about the various standards so that's nice explain some more here circuit diagram circuit diagram very nice well done good on you for supplying a circuit diagram for troubleshooting later on you never know you might damage it somehow or something one day and you want a circuit diagram to figure out how to fix it great that's brilliant so let's look at the other manual which is for the USB C to C type and it's Got the same sort of stuff, I suppose. Picture of the board, explanation about the pinouts and things like that, how to use it. Pinouts for the USB C and the various types again. Lots of information there, that's great, that's really good if you want to try and figure things out. And again, circuit diagram, two the connections, how it's wired up. Brilliant, very nicely done. This is really impressive. This is actually. Better than I thought it was going to be, I have to say. So you think, oh, there's a couple of simple boards. Well, yeah, they are relatively simple in that way. But when you need something like this, and you need to do testing of cables, it's invaluable. I pay for these myself. These aren't sponsored or anything. I should be clear about that. I actually purchased these. I was that impressed by what I saw from Dave's one. They looked good. I thought, yep, they'd be really handy. So I actually went and bought some. So go and check those out. CableQ.com. Worth getting them. I think I have an idea what's in this package. Just like it's packaged well enough, just like I asked, which is always nice. Can I slip it out from the bottom here? I think I can. Right. Nicely done. Death Pom approved packaging. Nice and rigid. That wasn't going to bend and get damaged in the post. Very nice. I need like a stamp, you know, Death Pom approved. You know, one of those little stamps you see on screen. I need one of them. See if I can make one. <laughs> this is the Model 260 nanovolt source for Keefley. Did I remove from the service department? Oh no, someone's in trouble. <laughs> I doubt the service department still exists. That's what it looks like. So it looks very similar to the other unit I've got, which is the 250, is it? Nano amp source, is it? I can't really remember what it is now. I've done a very similar device anyway. Same kinds of dial stuff, but this has got a little compartment in it. And this is a precision low voltage source. There you go. You're thinking, well, why have I got the manual? 
Well, that's because I purchased one of these things on eBay, and I'm waiting for it to arrive. I purchased the manual about a week after the actual device, I think, and the device has only just left the USA. So it took three and a half weeks for it to leave the USA. Three and a half weeks. And interesting, is the tracking says it's already been delivered. It got delivered to a reshipping warehouse or whatever it may be. That's where it got delivered to, but it's flagged as saying it's been delivered, but it hasn't. Because you go deeper into the tracking, turns out it's still on its way. <laughs> anyway, so I purchased one of these things, and that'll be an interesting thing to look at. Obviously I'll be doing a video later on, a refurbishment and check it out, and maybe repair. I've got no idea if it even works. But that's why I got this manual, because anything I intend to keep... I'll try and get a proper manual for it, like the original factory manual. There's a whole bunch of Keithley equipment here. National Bureau of Standards. Keithley 662, I wonder what that is. Hmm, I'll have to go and look that up. <laughs> and there you go, that's what the inside looks like. All shielded. Cool, it's got board layouts. The 260 is nanovolt source, and 261 is picoamp source. I think I've got a nanoamp source. I can't remember what the model number is now. So we've got parts list, circuit diagrams, must be in there surely, here we go, circuit diagram in the back. Not much to it, <laughs> really not much to it, a whole bunch of precision resistors basically. Yeah, hopefully none of those are damaged, that's always a problem. So watch out for that video coming up when I get that unit. Although I've got a few things to fix still, so it won't be for a little while. So if you're interested in test equipment repair, and you're not friendly on my channel because you're new here, make sure you subscribe because I repair test equipment. Last thing. So I finally did it. I purchased the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. This is from Blackmagic Design. Now these make the DaVinci Resolve, right? Which is why it's got DaVinci Resolve. It's meant for that software. And this also includes a studio license. So this is a bit expensive. This is like $700 in Zealand for this package. So that's for the editor controller and the license. So the license is actually most of the cost. I think it's about 500 and something for the license. And the actual control was not that much more expensive. So it makes sense to just buy the control with the license. So I've been using the free version of DaVinci Resolve for probably about two years now, something like that. And I've been really happy with it. It works really well. It's way more stable than Premiere ever was, Adobe Premiere, which is what I was using before that. That used to crash and all sorts of problems. I had to be really careful about how it did things. And anyway, I've been using Resolve and I've still got loads to learn about it. I'm barely even using any of what the software can do. Barely scratching the surface. You do want to do more like effects, video effects and things like that on my videos to make them look a bit more appealing and you know, for fancy editing and stuff like that. Um, but I thought, well, okay, I've been using DaVinci Resolve, been really happy with it. I should pay some back. The DaVinci Resolve is a free download, right? You can go and download it off the DaVinci website, or Blackmagic Design website. And you can use it. There's no cost for it. It does have some limitations. Not many, though. For people doing things like I do with you know, just YouTube editing, it's a perfectly usable piece of software as it is without having to pay anything. It's brilliant. But I've been using it for a while, and so I've been happy with it. And I do not mind paying for something I actually use and something which is good software. I've been really happy with it, so I've decided to buy it. Upgrade to the studio version, which is the paid version. I'm happy to do that. And that's done with the help of my Patreon supporters and my YouTube memberships. People which help support my channel, you know, give me contributions. Those help me to buy things like this to help the channel grow more and you know, improve things a bit more and just make the process a bit better. Currently I'm just using a standard keyboard for doing the editing side of things, you know, these controls. This also can take a bit of getting used to, you know, these sorts of things. It's completely different to what I've been using. But I think once you get used to using this, it's it's way better. I don't know, I'll find out, won't I? So thanks to everyone that does support the channel and uh, to me via Patreon and things like that. There are benefits of Patreon supporters, like when I do repairs and things like that, or product reviews or whatever, I actually include manuals and software in the Patreon video. So when I upload the videos to Patreon, attached to those videos, at least attached to the very first video, or just to, just to the very first one, is like service manual, user manual, any software that I can find, anything I've got for that particular item, a piece of equipment, I'll upload them onto there as well and share them so people can follow along with the videos or maybe if I'm in trouble diagnose something, they can actually help sometimes too. That's also useful. But mostly it's to help you play out because sometimes these things are really hard to find, these manuals. Sometimes they're no longer, you just can't get them. And if I happen to find a print version, I might scan it in and make that available with the video. But uh, anyway, that's digressing a bit. This will be a nice little tour to play with. Looking forward to getting used to that. I'm sure it's quite a learning curve. Check out the other videos down below. 
subscribe link over here if you're not already subscribed. Click the bell icon too to get notifications. And over here is a Patreon support link. So if you do want to support me, click on that. Or you can always use YouTube memberships too. That's down there. I prefer Patreon. It's actually more benefits to you using Patreon. Catch you later.